Okay, today we're going to make a, um, today we're going to make up a, uh, an Edison effect bulb. This is a picture of one, it's uh, from back in the 1800s, I guess, it's pretty old. Uh, there's some modern ones that are, look more modern, they look like a regular light bulb with a plate in it, uh, stuck in from the side. Not really very um, authentic looking. This, we'll make one that looks like one of these old ones. Authentic looking. All right, first thing we're gonna do is blow us up an envelope. First, we're gonna seal the end of the tube off. Uh, this is all the magnification we can get with this camera, but it's good enough. All right, what we're going to do now, we're going to seal the end off, make it nice, and then we'll go ahead and um, connect the uh, evacuation stem onto it. We've got our uh, hose hooked onto a cork in the back end of it, so we put pressure inside of it. The big torch, we're running 10 liters per minute of oxygen right now. That's both oxygen concentrators running full blast. Okay. End of it, get it out to the diameter first. We got a little bit of wobble here. If we have wobble, it's going to make the glass thicker on one side than the other. So I'm going to get rid of that wobble. To do that, I'm just going to warm it up. Use this carpet tool to straighten out the, uh, the wobble. Now we're perfectly concentric. All right, let's blow the bubble. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to fasten the uh, evacuation stem onto the top. Okay, to do that we have to blow a hole in the top of the tube. To do that we put pressure inside, we heat up a spot, it pops a hole. Okay, I'm going to open that up a little bit. 
using a little pointed tool. Okay. Got an evacuation stem onto it. go in there with the uh, support. Now the first thing we got to do, we have to heat the pieces of tungsten to oxidize them. For that we'll use a small torch. Just heating them to red hot, that forms a layer of oxide on them. That's what makes the seal. And then we heat the nickel up to get the oxygen out of it. Okie doke. Make the pinch. Okay.
gets that tape off of there and all of the uh, all of the, the, the glue. Okay. And there's our pinch. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to put that in the leak detector, and we're going to make sure it has no leaks. Okay. First. Before I do this, I'm going to ohm between here and here to make sure all of these are, are still contacting because sometimes when you do the, the, the seal, it melts the, the, the wire and breaks the weld. So that can be a disaster. So I'm going to go and ohm these to just make sure that each one of them has continuity. Okay, no problem at all. Now I learned all this little stuff from years of experience. I've had all this happen to me. Been there, done that. Okay, now we go ahead and pump her down. Take her on down to next to the green there, and then we can turn on the. It's been sitting at atmospheric for a month, so it'll take it a while. And once it gets into the green, then the diffusion pump will come on and heat up. That'll take about a half an hour, so we'll go ahead and um, wait for that to get ready. Okay, we're fully pumped down to uh, high vacuum. All right, what we'll do, we'll turn on the helium and see if we get a leak. Then we'll set this meter. Okay. That's a faint reading there. I think if we got the helium there, but it's going down. It's not continuing to go up. It would continue to go up if we had a leak. All right, we're okay on it. So we got a good seal ready to use. All right, the next thing that we have to do is... Uh, get the support for the filament. Okay. Now we can see from the picture what they do is they just come out a little bit and then come up and come out a little bit and then up and then in the middle we have the plate of course. Now I'm gonna put, see what they're doing, they're letting the filament just kinda hang up in the air there. I remember the last time I made one of these things what happened was when I heated the filament the thing started to warp and it moved over about 45 degrees. So I'm going to put a little support from the center up to, or from the edge up to the top. Insulating, of course, but enough to where I can just keep that uh, loop exactly over the plate. So to do that, we're going to, I'm just going to bend these out just a little bit. First, I'm going to scrape the crud off them. There's a little bit of oxide on here, and that can create trouble when we go to go to seal the uh, carbon fiber onto it. Okay, the middle one's okay. Okay, I'm going to just bend it out just a little bit. Up. All right, now, then I'm going to cut those off. Okay, now, that gives us the two filament connections. Now, the plate I got little strips here of material, and we'll just have that welded onto there, and that'll be our plate. Go ahead. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and weld the plate onto there. Next, I need to make the filament support. That's just going to be a piece of thin wire that'll go up in there. Okay, I'm going to use some of this right here. This is just thin nickel wire. Okay, I'm going to weld that onto there. This goes with the lowest power we can go. Okay, and I'm just going to weld that onto the 
Okay. And we have to put a glass bead on there because we can't have this contact the filament in the middle. We have to have a, um, an insulation there because we can't have an electrical contact or it'll short out half the filament. Okay, uh, here's the piece fastened onto there. Put my hand there and it'll focus. Okay. I forgot to turn the camera on over there at the glass blowing station to get this in the movie. But I just heated it up and melted um, the, the two pieces of wire into the glass tubing. There's just a slight, let me see if I can get it even closer. There's a little break in the glass tubing between the two pieces of wire. So we don't have an electrical connection. Alright, that's going to give us a support for the carbon fiber. Alright, here's the fi carbon fiber. Okay, I'm going to separate out. It's hair fine. It's, this is about maybe 15 or 20 strands right here of carbon fiber. Real fine stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it. It's, it's very fragile. Even though the stuff has a tensile strength that's pretty high, it's extremely fragile if you try to um, bend it. What I have to do is take it and um, get it tied onto there. See, that'll come up and over. Oh boy. Now, what I need is a piece of tape. <coughs> so what I have to do is just tape it here first to hold it. Then I'm going to come up like that and I'll be able to go around with this piece of fine wire and tie it onto the support. Okay. First turn. Okay, now this is going to hold it in position. Okay, it is around there. Okay. One turn. Okay, let me get it through again. We'll put about, let's see if I can get about five turns. There's three. Wow. Okay, that's four. Nope, nope, that ain't it. That's not it. I need to go down. There we go. There we go. Just. Okay. I'm going to snip that off. Okay. And we'll leave that there temporarily. Okay. Wow. Wow. See if I can get this on here without breaking it anymore. See, we've got the carbon fiber tied onto there. I don't know how close I can get it. You see how that's tied on there? What a nightmare. Okay, and we're supporting it right up at the top with that little hook. Okay, 
All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue these joints with ceramic cement to keep them from coming loose. Okay, this is ceramic cement and it's hardened up in the bottle, of course. It always will harden up. This is a mixture of powdered ceramic and silica gel. So it, it, uh, it, it's all um, stuff that will completely be okay in a vacuum. It's mixed in water. But when it hardens, it forms a, 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 a ceramic-like stuff. Okay, now I'm going to have to dry that a little bit. I don't want to get that on. The... Okay. Okay, that gets our filament. This is glued on there with ceramic cement. Now, if I was to hook it to a power supply, it should glow if we've got connections. We'll go ahead and test it and see, okay? I've got a... in half. I can't do that. In air, the carbon fiber burns. Oh, dumb mistake. Okay, it's, it's no big deal. I got plenty of carbon fiber. I just have to do this over again. We can't do this in air. I have to wait to test it. I can test it with an ohmmeter, but I cannot put voltage on it because when it turns red hot, um, it burns in air. Ah, not, not, not smart, not smart. Ooh, that's, that's good. That looks real good there. Okay. See, we're just lined up over the plate. And we're caught in that loop. We can't get out of that loop there. So it's going to be okay. All right. We're going to have argon in the tube. We don't want the air. If we have air, it's going to burn the carbon up. Let's see what this looks like up inside the tube. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's going to do just fine. It's going to be up in there like that. It's going to look good. Okay. Now, we have to have a getter. I'm going to take that and get it in there. Power. All right. And that gets our getter ring in there. Okay, we're ready to um, we're ready to seal it off. place here. Okay, it's, it's perfect, okay?
drifted off a little bit. I'm going to have to straighten it, okay? To straighten it, we use this tool here. I just warm it up. Okay. It's right in the middle. Okay, that's beautiful, okay? Now we get this side over here. Okay, I got it. Okay. Okay, let's get a couple of Here is our test supply for the all right, we're going to go from ground here. Okay, uh, this one right here is the current. We'll see if we can get any current out of it. All right, I'm going to bring the... Uh, whew. Whew. There's our uh, filament lit. All right, let's put some B plus on it and see what happens. Can we get... Now we're going to see if we can get some current here. Okay, here we go. Whoa! Little flashes there. Those are the broken strands that are in there. Okay. Now let's see if we can get some plate current. I'm gonna run the filament voltage out. <laughs> okay. We're going to have to use a more sensitive meter. I suspect it's going to be in the low microamps range. So I'm going to take this thing and set it to... There we go. We've got a little current. There's our Edison current. Okay. All right. I'm not going to stress it. <laughs> okay, we're going to seal the tube off because we want to go ahead and, and get the um, whole experiment done before we uh, burn it out. Whew! A lot of gas went out of it. We went up to about 100 microns of pressure there. Okay, it's pulling it back down. The, um, that fusion pump is pulling it back down. All right, we'll go again. And what I'm doing is preheating the getter, which drives the trapped gas out of it, and then that's being pumped out by the diffusion pump. Hit it a little bit. We've got a little bit of getter on there right now. Okay, dropping back down. 12, 11. Alright, here goes. I'm going to flash it. Okay, the getter is flat. Now, the next thing that has to be done is to put the argon in it. The valve is closed to the diffusion pump, so now I'm going to go ahead and open the valve a little bit, put some argon in it. We've got the, um, we've got the tank of argon here. It goes into our manifold, and we've got a valve here that we can uh, bleed it in, and we can watch it on the gauge down here to tell how much. I'm going to go and take it up until we read about two to three microns.
All right. That's what we're going to put in there. About 3.2 microns of argon. All right. Now we're going to seal the tube off. There's our tube. Our, our working, hopefully, completely working Edison lamp. Alright, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to mount it on a board so we don't tend to drop it over and break it. And then we're going to hook it up and show it working. Alright, we've got our tube. We've taken it and mounted it on a little piece of uh, wood and some terminals onto the thing so that we've got it to where we're not going to drop it over and break it. Okay, now we've got a micro amp meter here and we're going to use that to look at the uh, emission from the thing and we've got a little protection circuit on it to keep it... Uh, sometimes strands of carbon will break loose from the filament and touch the plate and you'll get a momentary spike of full voltage on the uh, on the output. We don't want to go ahead and um, slam our meter over with it, so I've got a little diode and resistor protection net network here that'll uh, make it to where we, um, we, we don't damage the, uh, the meter if we have a short. All right, let's go ahead and see what kind of emission we get. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the plate voltage to 100 volts just for the heck of it. I don't have any idea what it needs to be. Okay. Now, let's bring the filament up and see what we get. We'll watch our meter here. We're starting to light up. There, we're getting some emission. Okay. That's the Edison effect. Alright. Now, if we hook it up the other way, we now have the negative onto the plate and a positive on the filament. Get very little emission. We're getting a little bit because we have some argon gas in there and it ionizes and it'll conduct. But it's nothing like what we see when we have it in the correct direction for emission. Well, <clears throat> that's it. We successfully made an Edison effect lamp that actually works. This will go in a tube collection of a fellow and um, probably never be hooked up again. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It worked once. That's all it needs. If, if it works once for for everybody to see, that's what counts. Okay, um, that's the end of it.